Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord, we continue to make improvements here at St. Therese Parish. When I first came here four years ago, that presider's chair reminded me of an instrument of torture. It is the hardest thing on the face of the earth. Thank God the deacon finally placed a cushion on it. So we continue to make little bits and pieces of progress. A reminder that Lent begins this Wednesday and a reminder about the Lenten fast and abstinent regulations. Fast means that if you are 18 years of age or older, you are bound to keep the fast, meaning that you refrain from eating between meals. You have two small meals and one large meal during that day. And abstinence means you refrain from eating meat. And that's true of all Fridays of Lent, and that goes for anyone, no matter what your age, from little until they shove you in the grave when you're old. So please observe those important fast days and days of abstinence. Lenten Family Holy Hours begin this Thursday at 5.15. There will be Vespers, Mass, Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, and also a chance for people to go to communion. Again, this season, there will be no communal penance service here because I think it's a dangerous thing to gather a bunch of people together uh, for one hour when you have plenty of opportunities to go to confession before Lent. And I think that it's a good practice anyway because some people get into the habit of saying, well, I go to confession at Christmas and Easter, and let me tell you, that ain't enough. You need to be going once a month. So you'll have plenty of opportunities to go during Lent. There'll be extra times added for you, so please check the bulletin. Stations of the Cross begin this Friday at 5.30 p.m. The Knights of Columbus will also serve a to-go drive-through dinner after stations until 7 p.m. A different menu each week. This week, grilled cheese sandwiches with your choice of tomato or broccoli cheese soup. So please keep those things in mind. When I was in high school, one of the most foundational books that I read was written by a man by the name of John Howard Griffin. John Howard Griffin was an author who was concerned about the way that black U.S. citizens were treated in the South during the late 50s and 1960s. And he determined that he was going to write about that, but he knew that if he just wrote about it, that would not be enough. So he devised a way to become a black person. So 
so that he could go down south and see what was happening. He went to a doctor and asked how he could darken his skin tone and they injected him with some chemicals and gave him lotions and put him under a sun lamp and when he came out his skin was significantly darker. He shaved his head and changed the way that he dressed and the way that he spoke. And in the late part of 1959 and the early part of 1960, he headed for the South. And he would make two trips through the South. Each trip he would go to the same places. He would do the same things. He would interact with the same kind of people. First as a black man and then as a white man. The book was entitled Black Like Me. And as he would travel through the South, he would go to movie theaters and restaurants and playgrounds and swimming pools, places where people would congregate. He would get on buses and get in taxis and <clears throat> he would hitchhike he would do whatever it took to interact with people in the South. And he found some very interesting things about the nature of discrimination. He reports two incidents, and I'll just share those two incidents with you today because I think they illustrate the bigger picture. He was in Mobile, Alabama at the bus station waiting to take a trip as a black man. And he looked around in the waiting room and he saw that it was clearly divided, colored people on this side, white people on this side according to the sign. There were segregated drinking fountains. And as he was beginning to sit down, a woman entered the waiting room and looked at him and said, boy, boy, come over here. She said, my bags are in a taxi outside. Go get them for me and take them to the counter. And keeping in mind where he was, he followed her directions. He went and got the bags, took them to the counter and set them down and she handed him two dimes and then dismissed him as if he were an animal. Later, he went back to that same bus station as a white person. And he found a far different reception when he walked into the waiting room. The waiting room was full. There wasn't a seat to be had and a black man got up and gestured that this seat was open. He didn't necessarily do that out of charity in his heart. He did that because that's what was required in that society. And John Howard Griffin refused the seat and went out in the waiting room and walked down the street and he encountered a group of black people talking on the sidewalk, and when he approached, they stepped off into the gutter, stopped speaking, and let him pass. He had encountered in a very real way what discrimination and bigotry does. If you haven't read that book, get it and read it, because you know something? Things have not changed significantly since that time. We still live in a bigoted and discriminating society. We still have bias against different groups, whether they're Native Americans or whatever they may be. We still have prejudice against people of different religions, of different races, of different faiths, of different economic status. And I tell you, bigotry and discrimination 
is a serious, serious sin. The gospel talks about bigotry today. That gospel is not just a story of Christ healing. In the book of Leviticus, which was the first reading, you heard about how lepers were treated in Jewish society. How they were segregated away. And in fact, anyone that was different was segregated away. They were not allowed to live in cities. They had to live in shacks and caves outside of town because they were considered unclean. They couldn't touch anything that a normal or ordinary person touched because of the fear of the spread of disease, much like we are today with COVID. And they segregated the lepers apart and had nothing to do with them. In fact, if you were a leper and you were walking down the road, you had to announce to whoever came your way that you were unclean. Make way, I'm unclean. And then we're called to look at how Jesus treated lepers. He welcomed them. And when the leper came to him and asked to be made clean, if he willed it, he said, I do will it. And he made him clean and restored him to communion in the entire society. So today you and I are called to look at how Christ treated people that were different and how you and I treat people that are different. And if we treat them differently because of race or because of religion or because of economic circumstances, we are sinful people. And you know something? Every one of us is guilty of that at some level in our lives. And this week we are called to look at that reality in our lives as Catholic Christians and what we need to do to change it. Not long ago, several parishioners of this parish made a documentary about prejudice and bias and discrimination. We are just in the process of finishing the final touches of editing it, and it will be available to you on YouTube. I invite you to watch it. Because whether we know it or not, and whether we intend it or not, all of us have biases and prejudices that get turned into discrimination in the way that we treat other people. I have it, you have it, we all have it. So today we're called to look at our own lives and to decide what Christ is calling us to do.